Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to learn about how to predict compressive strength of concrete using neural networks with TensorFlow library. In this video, we will cover everything from data import, data cleaning to model training and evaluation. These are some of the key stages involved in developing our machine learning model using TensorFlow. Before we dive deep into today's tutorial, I have a small request. Behind every video, we do a lot of hard work to give you the best content. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel. Your subscription means a lot to us and it really motivates us to create more useful tutorials like this. Let's dive into today's tutorial. Here, we first uh, import necessary libraries for our project. This includes NumPy and Pandas for uh, data manipulation, Matplotlib for uh, data visualization, and TensorFlow for uh, building our machine learning model. And uh, apart from this, we are also importing few special functions from uh, scikit-learn library for uh, splitting the data into test and uh, training sets and for evaluating this R2 score, we are importing these two functions from scikit-learn library. TensorFlow is a very powerful library in building large neural networks and also it can efficiently handle large data sets. Here we import our data set. So this data set is obtained from UCI machine learning repository. So this data set is free and it contains eight input features, namely cement quantity, blast furnace lag, fly ash, water, super plasticizer, coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, age, and we have only one output quantity, that is the compressive strength of concrete. After reading the data from spreadsheet into a pandas data frame, here we convert our pandas data frame into numpy arrays for easier manipulation and compatibility with tensorflow. Overall, we have 1030 data points with eight input features and one output feature. Now, Let's move on to the most exciting part of our tutorial, that is building and training our machine learning model. The first step is of course uh, splitting the overall data set into separate training and uh, testing data sets. So here we are doing that by using this uh, train test split function of scikit-learn. This ensures that we have a separate data sets for training and evaluating our model's performance. So we split like uh, 824 data points of this uh, 1030 into training and 206 data points of this 1030 into testing. Here we define our neural network model using TensorFlow. Here we have defined two neural network architectures. So this is the first neural network architecture and this is the second neural network architecture. First one is defined with only one hidden layer and the second one is defined with multiple hidden layers. You can use any one, but the first one is less accurate as it has only one hidden layer. In this tutorial, we are mainly using this multi-layer neural network with various hidden layers to capture complex relationship within the data. And we are using this ReLU activation function in our hidden layers. ReLU is commonly used in deep learning models due to its efficiency in handling nonlinearities. This is where we train our uh, model using the training data set. We use this uh, mean squared error for evaluating the loss, Adam optimizer for efficiently minimizing the loss function and uh, improve the model's performance over time. Also, we do forward and uh, backward propagations like this in TensorFlow. During, during this training, our model iteratively adjusts its parameters, mainly weights and bias, to minimize the difference between predicted and actual values, ultimately to improve the predictive accuracy of our machine learning model. In each epoch or iteration, after training, we evaluate the model's performance using the testing set. We calculate the mean squared error loss to assess how well our model generalizes to unseen data, any new data. If we found our training and testing loss are within a reasonable limits, then we stop training the machine learning model. After creating the functions for creating this neural network and building the machine learning model, so now we are going to use those functions here actually. So overall we are doing 10,000 epochs with a learning rate of 0 0.0001. So we are passing these two to this uh, train test model. So we do these many number of iterations with this learning rate to create the machine learning model. And the model is defined here in this function. These are all the overall training and testing loss that we have got 
at each thousandth iteration. So to stop printing too much data, I just printed these uh, losses only at each thousandth iteration. So by the end of first iteration, you have these training loss and uh, this testing loss. But by the end of thousandth iteration, you have this loss. It reduces drastically. But after thousandth iteration, so the training and testing loss is not very significantly reduced, but overall uh, it followed a decreasing pattern. So at the end of uh, 9000th iteration, so our training and the testing losses are these. So training loss decreases significantly, but the testing loss is not decreased very significantly. It's gradually decreased actually. After training our machine learning model, I'm predicting the compressor strength of concrete for uh, the test data set here actually. It's just simple calling the model with a test data set of input features and uh, I am putting this training to false. So by setting this training variable to false, we do not update the internal parameters again. So we use whatever is available in this model. So here I am plotting uh, the cement quantity versus compressor strength of concrete and uh, blast furnace lag versus compressor strength of concrete. So if you look at the predictions, so the blue dots represents the actual original values and the orange dots represents the machine learning predictions. If you look at these two plots, we see our predictions are good, decent. Similarly, when I plot the remaining parameters, so I plotted two variables here and the remaining six input features I'm plotting here. This is the plot of uh, cement quantity versus compressor strength. This one is the blast furnace lag versus compressor strength. This is the fly ash versus compressor strength. This is water versus compressor strength plot. And similarly, these are super plasticizer and coarse aggregate versus compressor strength plots. And uh, these are fine aggregate and the age versus compressor strength plots. So overall, if you look at the plots visually, our plots are decent. So here uh, we were able to capture uh, the blast furnace lag variability and uh, here also we have captured uh, the blast furnace lag within a reasonable accuracy and uh, here also predictions are good. Similarly, age versus compressor strength of concrete predictions are also decent. Of course, there are some slight deviations, but overall the predictions are good. When we evaluate the R2 score of the model, so it is 0.8955. So any value greater than 0.85 is statistically good. We can go ahead with that model. Finally, after building the machine learning model, we are going to save the developed machine learning model using this model.save function. So if you execute this, our machine learning model will be saved in this file. We can use this file to deploy the model in real world applications, making predictions on new data without retraining from scratch. Now that we have trained and saved our model, let's see how we can use it for making predictions on new data. Here in this uh, Jupyter notebook, we load our previously trained model using TensorFlow's load model function. By loading the saved model, we can access all the parameters and architecture that we trained earlier. It is crucial to maintain consistency while loading the model. The file path specified here should match the location where you saved the model. Now let's create a new input feature representing a new type of concrete mixture. Each value in this array corresponds to a specific feature of concrete mixture such as the quantities of cement, water, aggregates, coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, etc. Let's pass this input feature to our loaded model to make predictions. Here. The training argument is set to false. So this ensures that our model performance only inferencing without updating its parameters. If you look at the result, the predicted value of compressive strength from TensorFlow is 80.02343. So if you keep the decimals aside, so overall our prediction is 80 MPA. For the same input feature, in our earlier tutorial, PyTorch prediction is 65 MPA. Results are strange, right? One is 80 MPA and the other is 65 MPA. Overall, the results are very different. Which one of these two are correct? Inherently, we cannot say which model is correct or incorrect because the R2 score of both models is greater than 0.85. Statistically, both models are good and acceptable. Apart from that, training and testing data is same, same number of hidden layers and same number of neurons in each layer. But the inherent randomness in calibrating the weights and bias in these two models are entirely different. Now, the main question is, which one is reliable, this PyTorch model or this TensorFlow model? 
This is a very important aspect of machine learning, the inherent variability in model predictions. We will address this in our future videos. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section. If you like our content, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Happy learning. Thank you.